In this video, I want to talk to you about Next.js's latest API and how we return different headers. Yes, return different headers because a lot of the docs and examples out there are about consuming them. But this is returning different headers. And why would you want to do that? Well, we don't always want to return JSON. Like in this case, I've got a badge on the right and we all love badges. And I want to return an SVG because then this can be used in the GitHub README. Let me show you. In the buy drop README in the repo, we have a badge repo rater with a rating of five from 12 people and the badge comes from the repo raters api and we get this and this is the code that generates it it is a page of code but not really because you've kind of got a variable here with some information i was gonna say some config whatever you want to call it and we've got some imports and we're guessing the parameters in the URL. So really, let me take you through it and show you there isn't that much to it and how this took me quite a while to create because I started doing it on the front end and I realized that the back end would have been better. And then I can show you how you can embed it in your uh, readme. That way you can use this if you want to, or you can create your own and improve your documentation and show people how to use it. Everyone loves badges. I really love badges, but I've never actually created one. So let's start right at the beginning. The first thing I did was install Badge Maker. They do have an online service, but I thought in this case, we'll just host it within our app itself. So I installed it as an NPM dependency. Then I did a whole lot of other stuff, which I'm not gonna go into because it wasn't really useful. And I learned a bit more about the latest Next.js, but it wasn't useful for this feature. I ended up kind of removing all those code and files. So then I move this to the API and I import the make uh, badge library. And then I also import from AppRite SDK and query. We are using AppRite and Next.js on this project. And the reason why I import those and also the client admin to connect to uh, AppRite is we are gonna get real data. So for example, on the right here, we pass in URL the owner, so the organization or the uh, username, and then the repo name. And and this will generate the information from the database. So if I change this to say repo rater, it will now change. It's had two ratings with an average of two. This is just my test data me playing with stuff. So actually repo rater has got much better ratings on the actual uh, production site. So what we do is from the request, I really like how Next.js has improved the way they handle APIs, um, not just having one function that deals with everything, the posts, the puts, and so separating those out is, was a huge game changer. So we get the request, and then from the request, we wanna grab out the parameters, in this case, owner and name, and then we go to the database and we query um, AppRite, we, we search for the owner, we search for the name, and we limit one, because we're only expecting one match. They are unique and does have an index on that. Then here we just put out the first document. This is where we configure the badge because we've got flats here, but you could have plastic, flat square. I wonder what flat square looks like. Hit save. Give that refresh. Oh, that's flat square. Looks all right. What do you think? Let me know what style you like the most. I don't know what the for the badge is. That, that, is that all social? They sound interesting. Oh, that looks quite cool. Maybe because I haven't seen that that often. <laughs> okay, you might, I'll, I'll play with these later on. I'm just kind of curious. Oh, I do like that one. Let me know what you think, but that's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, let me just revert that back to what it was. And we can have people customize it, right? We could actually add, this is a great idea. Just thought of this off the cuff. So thank you very much for your help. We could actually add, let's do that now. We could say, and not, uh, where's my hand? And, and we could say style. And in this case, I would say, just to prove that it works, plastic, it won't change anything. It's just gone back to, to the flats, what we had. But then what we could get here is grab the style out of the request parameter. So we could say style, style, and then down here, we can say style. In fact, we could just do this and that would also work. So now if we refresh, this should now use a style plastic. There we go, it looks like plastic. And what were the other ones? We said social, 
Enter, there you go. So now we've actually got it customizable so people could use whatever they want. I, I love geeking out with you. This is so much fun. Uh, okay, so now we've kind of got the configuration object as it were. Um, we set SVG to equal empty string and in the try, we try and make a badge and if it fails, we throw an error. Actually, if it fails, we should also return otherwise it will come down here and just break. So actually, as we're here, what we should probably do is have a think about what we want to return if it breaks. It's not JSON, so we can't return an error property with data inside it. We would need to return maybe a holding image. We'd have a think about that one, actually. So let me know in the comments below what you think we should do. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It really supports my channel and you get notified every time I post a new video. Well, now that we're coming to an end, I'm just about to do here so I don't forget return error badge maybe, or just return a, return a badge that just says error, I think. And um, this is what took me quite a while, was most of the time we were returning JSON, and that's what all the examples and resources available online are. But in this case, I wanted to return SVG, and I wasn't sure how. And we return a new response object, and this is the string, and then we set the headers with content type uh, SVG XML and then it just worked fine. So it's one of those things that is easy when you know how, but when you don't know how, searching for it was really, really hard. Definitely tested my Google Foo. And that's it, so that has deployed, and it is deployed, and you can see it at the top of the repo as well. And when you click it, it does go to rate the repo. You probably saw it flick up on the screen for a moment, but as I'm not logged in in this browser, it um, pushed me to the login page. But it does take you to the uh, rating page where it's already pre-filled the information. So I hope you like this video. I hope you've learned a bit more about Next.js, and I hope you've also learned a bit more about uh, the repo rater. Do come and uh, rate the repos that you like. Let me bring up the production, and then you can see kind of how it looks. So we have 165 ratings and over 100 repos, and these are ordered in the highest rating with the most votes. So if your favorite one is here, then don't forget to upvote it to make it appear. And then we've also got the popular ratings. So the ones at the moment have five or more votes that will be changing because I want to keep this pace quite short. And we're also trying to give shout outs to the users who do ratings. So you can see Chris here has done 18, beating me I'm at 17. And then you can go to go look at their profile as well. So it's a good way to give a bit more of a shout out and back to, to the community. And you log in with your GitHub and then you can rate repos. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the GitHub Discord where we can geek out on open source and learn together. I'll see you there.